Dr. Barry Epley, board certified plastic surgeon of Indianapolis, and I would like to share with you my over 15 year experience of fixing certain types of facial fractures utilizing lactosorb resorbable bone fixation system. A lactosorb is a resorbable polymer composed of 82% PLA and 18% PGA. It has a very well documented history of being broken down by a natural process through the Krebs metabolic cycle and eventually being excreted throughout the body as carbon dioxide and water. Uh, there is little question about lactosorb's ability to undergo complete and total resorption. My experience in utilizing lactosorb for facial fractures is specifically for fractures of the upper face and middle face as well as all fractures in children under the age of 12. Note specifically that my experience does not look at its use in mandible fractures where at this time it is not indicated due to its inferior load bearing properties compared to. In orbital fractures, particularly fractures of the orbital floor, lactosorb is an excellent method to reconstitute the integrity of, of the floor. As we can see here in this case of a classic orbital floor fracture, the orbital floor is down fractured and the orbital contents are impinging into the maxillaries. Uh, lactosorb orbital floor plates come in preformed shapes and while for the most part they are larger than need to be, they can easily be cut down into the exact size wafer that you need to reconstruct the, the floor that extends beyond the existing fractured bone edges. Uh, many times I prefer to take the fractured floor part, remove it, and then fix it to the lactosorb plate uh, as a bone graft fixed to the implant. Uh, this is an excellent way to not only put in material which goes away, but to put bone back to the orbital floor, which should go on heal. Cheekbone or zygomatic fractures are another good indication for lactosorb. Here we see the classic impacted ZMC fracture in which all three or four legs of the ZMC complex is rotated downward and inward into the sinus. Uh, one can repair this type of fracture by utilizing either plates or mesh once the ZMC complex is rotated back into position. I tend to divide these fractures into two, part, into two types, simple and complex. In more simple fractures, a single plate along the posterior maxillary buttress will, will work well, and many people call these incomplete ZMC fractures. Remember that when using lactosorb, which will go away, you cannot have a large gap over the plated area. So you must put back some type of bone or the fractured segments along the buttress to support this long term as the muscle go away. Uh, this is in contrast to what we do with metal, where we are not concerned with gaps as the metal plates will never go away. So again, do, don't leave large bone defects or fixation sites. And here we see a good example of multiple plate fixations of ZM3 fractures utilizing either the existing bone or bone grafts into those defects term fracture collapse. In more complex fractures where one needs to do fixation along the infraorbital rim as well as the frontal zygomatic buttress comma, I prefer to use 1.5 millimeter plates due to their lower profile. And here we see an example of a good long-term over one year outcome from a ZMC fracture repair reconstituting the uh, cheek contour areas. In, in select non-comminuted Lafort 1 fractures, I have found this to be another good indication for lactosorb. Uh, this requires the typical four plate fixation points as one would do in a Lafort 1 osteotomy along the paranasal area as well as along the axillary uh, buttress. Uh, I do like to keep arch bars on after this type of repair just in case one needs to do something uh, several weeks after surgery. In children, uh, particularly under the age of 12, uh, 
Lactazorb does work well for mandible fractures due to their lower load bearing and often uh, incomplete permanent erupted dentition. Here we see an example of a, a very severely comminuted and displaced parasymphysial fracture which has been repaired by two 1.5 lactosorb plates. Here are several other examples of taking plates both along the symphysis and chin areas. Uh, but I would like to point out that lactosorb is not good for mandible fractures. Uh, quite simply, resorbable fixation devices do not provide sufficient stability in the mandible where there are higher load-bearing areas or in very thin comminuted fractures anywhere on the face. Uh, this would certainly eliminate fracture applications of the adult mandible fractures, extensive comminuted panfacial fractures, and really complex facial fractures of both the maxilla and mandible.